Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of The Guido Goes Off. As always, thank you for watching. If you are new to the show and would like to join the feed but faithful, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, well, today this is my review of the Super Showdown show that took place at the Melbourne Cricket Grounds in Melbourne, Australia. Um, I know a lot of people uh, woke up pretty early for this. It was at 4 a.m. local time. Um, of course, I'm sitting here playing catch-up. So here we go. Um, starting off, um, the event started with the New Day defending the SmackDown Tag Team Championships against the Bar. Uh, it was Kofi and Xavier um, going for the New Day. Um, very good. Um, very solid match. Very good back and forth. Um, of course, uh, Woods and Kofi exploiting their speed advantage. Um, New Day or uh, the bar showing their strength. Cesaro went for the swing. Um, always good to see that. Um, it ended with a backstabber double stomp combo from Woods and Kofi. Your winners and still SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions, The New Day. Moving on to one of the more anticipated matches of this card, that being Becky Lynch defending the SmackDown, ta uh, SmackDown Women's Championship against Charlotte. As we know, the change in attitude with Becky Lynch has been wide wildly popular, even so much that Vince McMahon himself has been very happy with it. And you know, he's usually never happy with anything. Um... Becky was a house of fire right out of the gate. You're trying to win the match early. Um, both women showing new wrinkles in their offense um, while trying to target for their submissions. Um, Becky using a Fujiwara armbar. Um, Charlotte going for a Boston Crab. Um, both women try. Um, both women tried a top rope move. Uh, Charlotte went for a moonsault, uh, caught the knees. Uh, Becky then went for that Dublin Jam leg drop. Um, Charlotte getting out of the way. Um, you know, a lot of uh, false finishes. Um, um, attempts at the figure eight. Um, with, uh, like, towards the end of the match, um, Charlotte was trying to get the figure eight. Becky rolled out of the ring. She grabbed the title, her title from the timekeeper area. Charlotte threw her in. The belt ended up in the ring. Charlotte then um, Charlotte then ended up hitting the spear, going for the figure four, and as she's trying to bridge, um, Becky grabs the title belt, hits her with it, ends the match at a DQ. Your winner by disqualification is Charlotte, but still, Becky Lynch is a SmackDown Live Women's Champion. Yay! Okay, moving on. Um, moving on, the tag team match as Kevin Owens and Elias took on John Cena and Bobby Lashley. Lashley took a lot of the offense for the most part in this match. Um, sorry. You know, taking the brunt, um, KO, and then Elias got tagged in. Then Cena tagged in, got tagged in. Cra uh, crowd went wild. Got all five moves. Then the match ended with the sixth move of Doom. A punch. That's the sixth move of Doom. Uh, cover the count. Your winner, your winner um, with JBL. I mean, Cena getting the pinfall. Uh, so your winners, Bobby Lashley and John Cena. Cena thanked the crowd, said he doesn't know what the future holds, focused on the here and now, you know, because mostly, you know, Nikki's running around doing, you know, I'll get to her in a minute. Okay, the next match was a women's tag team match featuring the Iconics, the hometown girls, taking on the team of Asuka and Naomi. Um, of course, the crowd was, v you know, very hot for the Iconics, and the Iconics in... Um, a change of pace, as they seem to be more of the faces in this match, as, you know, both are from Australia. Um, cutting more of a positive promo, saying, you know, that Asuka and Naomi were good. But, of course, they were iconic. Um, 
seemed a lot it uh, seemed to focus more on Billy and Peyton um seemed to fight Oscar more in this match um Naomi gets in towards the end and then uh the finish is um I don't really know how to describe it Billy K kind of hanging um kind of hanging Naomi out there for Peyton to hit a knee trembler uh your winners the hometown girls the iconics um you know, anyway, I think that this match was a good, a good change of pace. You know, this it seemed to be more of a a different wrinkle from the Iconics. It's, you know, there's been a lot of complaints that they're not getting used. But it's also it's kind of hinting more at that women's tag team division that has been talked about. And here's hoping that happens. Okay, the next match was AJ Styles defending the... WWE Championship against Samoa Joe, of course, uh, General Manager Page, Harry the Guido, uh, did uh, did make this match. No disqualification, no count out. There must be a winner. Of course, we had this great build for this match. It was um, you know with uh, Samoa Joe, you know, taunting AJ with his family and that. Um, of course, it was very you know very solid through um, through the throughout um but midway through the toy the toys started coming out of course no qualification um Samojo hitting a uranagi on AJ Styles onto a chair um AJ had blood coming out of his mouth um then Joe set up a table it looked like he was going for a uh, some type of move AJ countered into an electric chair drop through the table uh, Joe ended up uh, hurting his knee. He was uh, saying to the ref, "You know, I, I heard it pop. I heard it pop. I, you know, I'm fine." AJ then casually moving the referee out of the way, and then goes right to work on that knee um, as he had um, attempted a calf crusher earlier in the match. Um, he's pretty much going after it using a bunch of whole thing a springboard 450. Onto it, then locking in the calf crusher. Samoa Joe having no choice but to tap out. Your winner and still WWE champion AJ Styles. Um, it was great to see this. I mean, this is a great feud. I, I feel I have a feeling we are going to see this again sometime down the road. As we know, these two have worked together forever and ever. Amen. Great to see these two guys work. Um. Moving on to, yay, uh, Ronda Rousey, the Raw Women's Champion, not defending, and Brian Nikki Bella against the Riot Squad. Um, it was um, announced that Liv, uh, Liv Mor it was great to see Liv Morgan back in action. As we know, she um, did suffer a concussion uh, a couple weeks ago from Brie Bella kicking her in the head. Um, but she was clear. She was good to go. Um, what the hell is wrong with Nikki Bella? Nikki. Nikki, Nikki, Nikki. Um, it just seemed, you know, one of my biggest complaints about this match is that Nikki Bella gave about as much effort as she does having sex with a guy that makes less than $250,000 a year. Okay, Nikki, it's time for you once again get Guido's words of encouragement. Sell, bitch! Um, and then, of course, Liv getting tagged in, and Liv and Brie ending up in the ring together. Liv taunting uh, Brie, uh, sticking her tongue out, Brie grabbing the blue tongue. Um, kind, of, kind of funny from my uh, perspective. Um, then Ronda getting the tag in, um, as Sarah Logan got the tag in for the uh, Riot Squad. Liv, um, get, um, Trying to help her out of the armbar, ends up um, she ends up doing that. You know, she ends up doing a um, arm whip, bringing both women down, and ends up locking both Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan with uh, Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan. Easy for me to say, in a double armbar because one wasn't enough for the Super Showdown. Um, of course, both women tapped as one was legal. You know, your winners. Uh, Ronda Rousey and the Bella Twins. Please, Nikki, fucking sell. 
Moving on, another hometown boy uh, going for a championship in this match as Buddy Murphy went off against Cedric Alexander, who was defending his Cruiserweight Championship. Murphy just a house of fire right out of the gate. Um, you know, doing you know a bunch of moves, a, 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 a tope con heel to the outside. Um, Cedric then regained control and ended up getting ended up hitting a Michinoku driver from the top rope on Murphy. Uh, got a kick out. Um, got the only two count out of that. Um, but as I said, it was because of the fast pace. Um, Cedric was able to hit the lumbar check, not able to follow up as quickly as he would like. Um, ended up going to the top rope, um, jumping off. Ended up catching a flying knee from Buddy Murphy, and then, who then hit him with the inverted death is inverted Death Valley driver. And the best kept secret is out. One, two, three. Your winner and pretty much the only title change of the night. New cruiserweight champion Buddy Murphy. Um, it was, it was, this match was pretty quick. It and uh, but it was it was very solid, very good match. Um, up next, The Shield taking on the team of Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, Andrew McIntyre. <clears throat> Rollins, um, end up starting for The Shield in this, and he, um, there's just, he, he took a lot of punishment as so there's frequent tags from Strowman and McIntyre and Ziggy. Um, of course, a real big turn, as of course, everyone was talking about, is Dean going to turn on The Shield? Is Dean going to turn on The Shield? Well, um, of course, there was this big spot where Reigns, in, it, uh, in going for Drew McIntyre, ends up hitting Dean Ambrose with the Superman punch, um, knocking him down for a long, long time. Um, it, it created a three-on-two situation, and uh, Strowman and company did take full advantage with um, Strowman doing his run-over-you spot. Um, on both Reigns and on Rollins. Um, Ambrose then does taking a beating. And uh, Strowman says, throw him outside, I'll run him over. Um, so, they th so they threw him outside, they set him up. Strowman is running. And then Reigns intercepting with a spear, knocking um, Strowman through the barricade. Um, Ziggler um, drags Ambrose in. Uh, he and McIntyre are setting up for that um, Claymore zigzag combo. Uh, McIntyre eats a super kick from Rollins. Rollins eats a super kick from Ziggler. Ambrose has recovered enough to hit Dirty Deeds on Ziggler. One, two, three, your winners. A still intact shield. Because a broken shield is worthless. Um, yeah, like I said, quite a lot of excitement in that match. Okay, up next was um, was Daniel Bryan going up against The Miz. The winner of this match will fate, um, was is slated to face AJ Styles for the WWE Championship at Crown Jewel. This was a very short match. Um, of course, uh, Daniel um, nursing a rib injury. And Miz, uh, he goes straight for it. Not surprising. Um, Brian hitting the yes kicks. And as he's about to go for it, he, um, Miz ends up hitting a running knee, going for the cover, uh, only getting a two count, yelling at the referee. Then as he's turned back, he turns back to face, uh, to get a skull crushing finale on uh, Daniel Bryan. Brian counters it into a small package. Very quick count. Your winner, Daniel Bryan. I know a lot of people were thinking the Miz was going to win this um, because they're hoping for this big Miz and Bryan match um, at WrestleMania. Of course, there's still time to set that up. But like I said, very, um, very short match. Of course, they um, trying to give as much time to the main events. And the main event, uh, Triple H, go uh, with Shawn Michaels in his corner. Uh, going up against the Undertaker, who had Kane in his corner, um, it was announced like right at the beginning that the match had been made no disqualification. Um, 
don't know about a lot of people, but for me, that kind of ruined the finish for me. Because I'm like, okay, yeah, I know who's going to win now. Um, It just seemed like every time The Undertaker was trying to get some offense going, Shawn Michaels was right there, causing all sorts of havoc, hitting him, pushing him into ring posts, things like that. Um, then ends up nail, um, Taker ends up nailing Sean. Um, he and Triple H fight through the crowd, bring it back into the ring. Um, Undertaker hits that tombstone, getting a two count. That's when, uh, and that's, this is when the toys come out, both men using a steel chair on each other. Um, Michaels end up setting up a table. Um, Taker was going to put Triple H through it, or going to take early Triple H on it. Was going to go through it. Of course, Michaels interfered again. Um, Kane ended up going through that table, um, nullifying him. He really didn't do a whole heck of a Kane really didn't do a whole heck of a lot as far as interference was concerned. Um, then, of course, more toys broken out. Uh, Kane ends up sliding a steel chair into Taker. While um, Sean, Sean slides the sledgehammer to Triple H, um, Triple H, um, Taker's going for that chair shot. Um, um, Triple H hits the sledgehammer with it, um, bouncing it back in, goes for the cover, two count only. Um, then, as he's trying to pick him back up, Taker locking in Hell's Gate, um, which, you know, it seems like Triple H is starting to fade. Uses sledge Triple H then uses the sledgehammer to choke him out of it. Um, the two end up, you know, kind of gassed. Um, Taker grabs the sledgehammer, ends up tossing it outside, um, saying he wants to basically saying he wants to finish this straight up. Goes for another tombstone. Shawn Michaels hits sweet chin music to interfere. Um, he then goes for another move. Taker grabs him, about to hit him with the tombstone. Um, Triple H hits him with a sledgehammer. Michaels hits another sweet chin music, and then ends it, and then Triple H ends it with the pedigree. One, two, three, your winner, Triple H. Finally defeating The Undertaker after 16 years. And massive use of political power. But good. Um, at the end, you had this big curtain call, and then... Uh, well, the Brothers of Destruction beat the crap out of Triple H and Shawn Michaels. So, um, all in all, ugh, I it just seemed like a lot of this was rushed. I mean, I heard this was they're slating this for a like a five hour um runtime, and you know you had like ten matches on the cards, so um it did end up being four hours. But like I said, a lot of it was kind of rushed. Um. Let's see. My personal, fa um, my personal favorite. You know, as much as I would like to say Becky Lynch and Charlotte, it has to go to AJ and Samoa Joe. These two guys did, you know, a great match with a great build, um, a great finish to this feud, at least for now. Um, a, a great, you know, a great solid match. As, as I said, you expect nothing less from these guys. You know, expect them to deliver. They delivered, as always, a great match. Um, my low spot easily had to be um, between Nikki's lack of enthusiasm for wrestling. Um, if I was going to nitpick on one mat, uh, one aspect, one person, but as far as like a match, um, it, it's going to go to Daniel Bryan and the Miss because it was too short. Um, I think this match only lasted like maybe three, four minutes, and it should have gone longer. I mean, I understand, you know, you want to build as much time for the main event, but, uh, you know, seriously. But, the, but, you know, like I said, that match should have gone longer. Um, let's see, if I'm going to give this a rating, um... I would say a D, because like I said, the whole thing just felt rushed. Um, you didn't really get the chance to enjoy a lot of the marquee matches, because a lot of them were pretty short. Um, but that's what I have to say. 
about Super Showdown. What are your thoughts on the Super Showdown show? Uh, down, under, show, down, super, instinct. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. As always, you can talk to me via my social media. Of course, the Twitter and Instagram at r underscore man underscore guido. And please go to the Facebook page. Uh, give that a like. Give that a follow. And, as always, please like these videos. Share them with everyone you know. And, if you have yet to join the Few But Faithful, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. So, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I am the Guido. And I think we're done here.